is everything that Jackery Smart Transfer Switch can do. As a disclaimer, I bought everything and Jackery did not tell me or provide me with any of the products that you see in this video. Everything is my own opinion. Let's get started. The Jackery Smart Transfer Switch was first released on October 23, 2024. So that means this is still a new product. The Jackery Smart Transfer Switch is meant to prevent backfeeding the grid and protecting linemen during a power outage because their lives are at stake if you ever backfeed the grid, whether it's a gas generator or even a battery. While some of you might think that this is only used for power outages, the Jaguar Smart Transfer Switch, just like all these other companies such as Anchor, EcoFlow, etc., you're also able to switch it and save money by running off of battery power during peak hours. So what this means is that you're paying off peak hours, during peak hours you're using way less of it because you're running off of the battery, then by the time it's 9 p.m. when it's off peak again or on super off peak hours, you can recharge the battery for a lower cost, meaning that you're actually using electricity for a lower cost. Now it may surprise you, but what I actually have that you see in this video is not my original smart transfer switch. That's actually my second smart transfer switch. My original smart transfer switch I bought off of eBay because I saw that it was cheap and it was Memorial Day. But what happened is that I called Jackery. It was a bit of a struggle. It took them about three weeks to tell me that I have actually a marketing unit, a beta unit, that was actually not for resale. But the eBay seller just decided to sell it because they want the money, of course. You would say, like, what? But luckily they helped me get a new smart transfer switch. I had to pay out of pocket. Luckily they gave me 40% off. But then Jackery and my bank actually helped me out with trying to get a refund and return the defective unit, which is the, again the marketing beta unit, which isn't supposed to be sold. So customer service literally took me three weeks just to tell me that when they could have done it in one week. So customer service definitely is a struggle, but once they actually get to you or the supervisor contacts you and you're getting actual communication back and forth every single day, then they will find a solution. So while it is a struggle, they do find a solution. Um, now, when I did ask them whether their coders are in the US or out of the US or something like that, they said that they all work remotely. So, I, I yeah, customer service is a little bit funky. But I mean, once you get the solution figured out, it definitely is worth it. Now, in my case, three weeks is a lot of time. So if they just told me that, hey, you have a marketing unit on the first week, um, we'll give you a 40% discount on a new smart transfer switch, which is, I mean, they gave me it, but it was three weeks later. Then by the following week, I would automatically know what is going on and get it resolved. Instead, it took me almost a whole month just to get it resolved. I do want to note that it's a lot better if you get it from Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, and straight from the Jackery website. Because if you don't, so basically if you get it from those retailers, which is usually Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc., you're able to get the five-year warranty, which comes with it, because you're going to be the sole owner. Now, if you get it from a third party, such as eBay or a used seller or at a garage sale or whatever, you do not get that warranty. That's what sucked when I was on the call. So, in simple terms, just get it off of the Jacker website, off of Walmart. I don't know if Walmart even sells these things. Get it off of Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, anywhere else except third party sellers, especially off of eBay. Now, if it is a defective unit, don't just keep paying that. Go ahead and complain because usually around the United States, if it's a defective product, a defective unit that you bought, you are pretty much allowed to return that because it's not usable. Why should you keep paying something when it's not usable, right? So just keep that in mind. Do not go off to third party sellers or get a used panel because if you try and do that and the panel does not work, you're pretty much screwed. Another thing I have noticed is that inside of the manual, it does not talk about how you can actually test your smart transfer switch, which I find really, really weird. So I figured this out because again, my original smart transfer switch was a marketing beta unit. So that means that I wasn't even able to connect it to the app, but it kept showing this error. We got our panel installed, but when I press this, even on my other device, it says that I can't add it, which is really, really weird. So in order to prevent you 
from having that issue and paying your electrician a little bit more. Value, I had a really good electrician. Um, but usually there are greedy electricians that will actually charge you double or even triple just because they want you to reinstall it and all that stuff. So in simple terms, because it's not in the manual, how you would do it, you would get your Jackery Smart Transfer Switch, you would get your Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus, you plug in your Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus to your Smart Transfer Switch, and again, this is without any grid connection. This is just straight out of the box. Now, where it says on the top, grid, battery, dot, very top circuit, flip it to battery. Now, because it's on battery, it's running off of the Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus. Now, by this point, you should be able to see lights blinking. Now, you're able to open up a Jackery app, create an account, and also connect to it. You're also able to see if there are any errors with the unit, or if you're even unable to connect the unit. Now, if obviously, if it's a defective unit, it wouldn't be trying to connect to the app. It will show this specified device is not found or something, some random error message. Now, that does happen, and I'm assuming that you bought it from either Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, or from the Jacker website. You contact them to get a free replacement because you got it straight from the manufacturer and their partners, and obviously the trusted sources, um, not from a third party, third party seller, right? So in this case, you would get a new smart transfer switch. Now, if it does work, great. Go ahead and call an electrician. I would recommend having at least three or more electricians to give you a quote. Don't just go with just one. That's just something that the manual does not even talk about. All right, so we are here inside of my garage. This is what the smart transfer switch looks like. The electrician was able to do a clean install from our main circuit breaker right here. This is two inch LB conduits so at a 90 degree angle. And this is another two inch conduit with the proper electrical code, US electrical code um, connections from here over on into the smart transfer switch. Now you do need to actually create a hole yourself. So usually the electrician will have his own tools to actually make the holes to drill inside of this. There's no pre-drilled holes on the actual unit itself. Now if I go ahead and open this up, it has a sleek modern design. You're able to see all the labels. Um, now these labels is not actually what it originally looks like. I actually bought this off of Amazon and if I need to change something out, I can just use whiteboard marker and eraser to just switch it out or relabel it and so forth. So currently right here, I have my 15 amp breakers. I have a one, uh, they're all single pull, 20 amp and so forth. So basically, this is what it looks like. It's very, very clean. Now, I did not, again, I did not do it. I had an electrician do it. So basically, if there is a problem with it, this will be the electrician's problem. And usually the electrician has about a two or one year warranty. So if anything goes on with the wiring, you're not really responsible if your electrician is because he's the one that wired it. And then make sure they're certified. Make sure it's not a fake certification, of course. But then right here, I have, I believe, a 14 gauge wire. I think it's a 14 gauge or something like that. Um, does it say on here? No, it's a 10 gauge wire. So Jackery automatically provides you with a 10 gauge wire to go from your Explorer 5000 Plus to your smart transfer, transfer switch, which comes inside of the box itself. Now, uh, let's just say that the power or um, the Wi-Fi goes out or something and you want to switch over to battery. Usually it would automatically do this if the grid power goes down. If you want to manually do it, go from the grid, flip the switch over to battery. It takes five seconds. It's not 20 milliseconds. It takes five seconds when you do it manually. But this is what it looks like right here. It's very clean. If we do press on this button where it says pause, resume right here, basically it's like an emergency switch. So if something goes on or if you just want to do some maintenance on it, you press on that, it cuts off power to the whole panel completely. Ideally, the safer way is that you would flip from grid to battery and then you press this button, then you go to your main breaker and shut off the 60 or 100 amp two pole circuit. So basically configuration wise is that it's great connection, it's not entirely connected to your actual power company itself. It will be added as another circuit on your main breaker, which usually at minimum has to be 100 amps, at maximum 200 amps or more. So basically I have a 200 amp panel, we took a 60, on an amp double pole circuit into here as our grid connection and it powers all of this right here. I also want to note that we have the battery right here, but if you ever want to expand it by 5,000 watts every time, 
you're gonna actually expand it through this DC port right here. So if you can think of it, this part's the battery, this is the inverter, this converts DC to AC, uses the battery's DC, anything with the battery's DC. So DC, AC, AC. And now if you wanna go expand it, there's a DC port to connect more. You can go up to, I believe, 90 watts. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the app. So you will just press on this button right here. It will be spinning around. And for the smart transfer switch, you can also click on that and go through the guide. We press on the internet of things, which is the IOT button and click on icon flash. It should show up here and then it will ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi. Once it connects to your Wi-Fi, then you will be seeing the grid, the home, and the battery all connected. Now, if your battery's not connected, obviously we'll just show the same thing as AC2 right here. So the first things first is that if you press on a grid, you're able to see the consumption from today. Most of the time it will be blank and it will show the current time that you just connected it to the actual Wi-Fi itself. If there's any power outage, it will let you know down here in the bottom part. That says frequency and total duration. You can also see your week month and yearly use. Click on the back arrow. Let's go ahead and click on where it says home. Right here on home, you can see your day, week, month, and year. What I don't like is how everything is on two, four, six, eight, and so forth. Every time it's two hours. I did send an email to Jackery requesting to see if we can get one or just one hour. So each hour is just one, two, three, four, etc., And it should count like that. So it's a lot more easy and comparable to the power companies. Uh, you know, bill, usage rates, etc., and so forth. Now, if we click down here where it says zero watts, that's basically where you can see total remaining time, total remaining power. You're able to charge it now if you press on that button, AC1, and a lot more information. Now, if you do have a lot, a lot more of expansion packs, it will still show right here. So right under where it says E5000 plus, it will show a lot more of the batteries especially when there's AC1, AC2, and so forth. This button right here, so basically to your left, that is the grid. To your right, that is basically the battery. If you click on it, you're able to uh, switch. It will ask you to switch from grid power to power station uh, power. So you will click on OK, then it will automatically switch to the battery. Down here, you can see solar generation, consum house consumption, grid consumption, and generation. If you click on generation, what you can see is basically your charging total charging amount, total discharge amount. You can see on day, week, month, and year. So let's go ahead and look at month. So currently this month, we have used 25.866 kilowatts and 17.971 discharging. So the discharging is what's going to your house during the peak hours or uh, during a power outage. Now the total charging amount is basically the battery recharging itself from grid or solar power. Down here you can see circuits. So right here in circuits, you are actually able to label the circuit. So if I go to label nine, uh, circuit nine, then you can see that you can turn on and off the circuit simply just by pressing it and pressing okay and turning it back on and there you go. Now, right here on the little top right corner, you can also re rename it. So let's go ahead and add a one for example. So now this is saying that circuit 91. Let's go ahead and go back. And now it's back to circuit nine. You're able to name it and so forth. Now, while you see that there's one, three, two, four, they're all gonna come individually first as single pole circuits. If you have a double pole circuit, you would go to the settings icon, you would go to full voltage configuration, you'll click on this little edit icon on the top, and you would press on the combine. Now, keep in mind when you do this that you cannot do across or from far away. They have to be right next to each other and they have to be on the same amp. Most of the time, that depends on the electrical code, but from my knowledge, it's usually 15, 15, 15, 15, 20, 20, which basically means 15 amp, 15 amp. So basically one is 15 amp, three is 15 amps and so forth. Uh, six, circuit six is a 20 amp, circuit eight is a 20 amp. Basically what this does is that it doubles the voltage from 120 volts, which is usually your standard household outlet for um, a computer to something like a high voltage device, such as a refrigerator up to 240 volts. And again, right here on the top, it says combine two single pole circuits to create a two, two pole circuit doubling the voltage. Oh, basically double the voltage, making it a lot more stable. Now let's go down here to working modes. Down here in working mode, you can set up your backup reserve. So currently I have set up 10% reserve energy for grid outage. So if there's a power outage, at least 10% is being used 
or available for the power grid. Now, if you have about 50% and didn't reach 10%, that means you are still using 50% all the way down to 0% during a power outage. 90% power for charging discharging plan. So what this basically means is that if you're going to use it during peak hours, it's only gonna use 90% of the battery. Once it hits 10%, it will go back to grid. All right, here there's automatic charging mode. Power station will automatically charge to 100% when AC1 or AC2 is below backup power level. Self-powered so basically is maximizes the use of solar energy and reduces reliance on grid electricity by prioritizing stored, by prioritizing stored solar energy. And down here is the plan that I chose, which is the charging discharging plan, which is usually used during peak hours. What it says is suitable for situations with fluctuation electricity prices, allows for charging and discharging plans based on peak and off peak electricity timings, reducing electricity costs. So we click on that right here. You're able to see all of the plans that I have set. You're able to turn them on and off. You can also click on add, click on the days of the week, and put in the times whether it should charge or discharge. Now here is backup only mode. It says in this mode, the energy storage system reserve its energy if it's charged solely for emergencies. It doesn't release energy for daily use, but it remains fully charged and ready to supply power during a blackout or grid, or grid failure. You can only have that disabled because if you actually enable it, that means your battery is only gonna be used during a power outage. It's not going to be used to save some money during peak hours. Right here is backup priority. This is what I'm talking about that you can actually prioritize which circuits that you want to have on. So if it's a medical device and you know which circuit it's on, you definitely want to put that on the must have circuits part. Now, if you don't really like the unit, right? So if you have one, um, by unit, I mean like if you don't want the circuit to be used, but by the time it reaches a certain level, it should be shut off. So in this case, if there's a computer in Yogi's room, which is my brother's room, so if there's a computer on, he will have enough time before it reaches 5% when the circuit actually shuts off itself. Now all the non-essential circuits or unused circuits I put in under non-essential, which means circuits will not be powered during battery only power supply. Let's go ahead and click on the back arrow. And right down here, it's carbon reduction. So currently I do not have solar, so this is all zero right here. Let's go ahead and go up to the top and click on the settings icon. Right here, you can edit the name of the smart transfer switch if you want and press OK. Again, there's voltage configuration. We already went through that. Working modes. So the working modes is again your charging discharging plan. Backup only mode shows you this prompt again. Backup priority. And right here is UPS mode. So while you see UPS mode, you might think that you would actually need to turn it on. In my case, in my opinion, you should just turn it off. Because if you turn it on, what it does is that mean is basically meaning that it will take power from your battery just to monitor the grid voltage every single day. Now the battery should automatically do this. It should automatically transfer over and it should not affect any of your computer devices. But if you have a really like super, super sensitive device, then I would enable it if you're fine with the battery draining about five to 10% because UPS mode is turned on. Now, if you go to your main battery and you turn it to zero milliseconds, what I heard is that it should sometimes take up to 50% of your battery because it's monitoring the voltage from the grid every single day. Now, right below that is for your firmware upgrade. So you can upgrade the firmware, device specifications, if you ever wanna know the facts about it, the brand circuits, 14, 12, 10, so forth for like installation, and the user manual, of course. That's what the Jackery Smart Transit Switch looks like in the app. If you really like this video, go ahead and check out this video right here that talks about this battery right here connecting to the Smart Transit Switch or subscribe right here for more videos like this one. I'll see you soon.